Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, all right, so we'll just uh, we'll just dive, dive on into it. Uh, sure. Really quick question: um, What uh, what what computer language are you the most sort of familiar and comfortable with? Sure, I think JavaScript right now is my primary language. Okay, so you're more of like a, a front end. Uh, um, yeah, so I kind of have general experience. I, I, I have most experience in sort of um, full stack web. But I've done things from like JavaScript to Python to C sharp, Java, and so on. Uh, okay. I think J JavaScript is the one where uh, I spent a couple of months like really intensely doing that. So it's the one where I had the most in depth experience, I guess. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm a little bit less familiar with, with the, the ins and outs of that one, but I'm, I'm sure that this, this should be a general enough question that uh, you can, you'll be able to, to, to make it work. Okay, so cool. the, the kind of thing I'm thinking about here, the, the problem we're trying to solve is a, um, an efficient and like a space efficient means of storing a large dictionary of um, uh, like a, a key value store. Okay. So, you know, and of course many, um, uh, Languages come with this out of the box. You know, Java sure. has hash maps and Python has dictionaries, and I'm sure that JavaScript has something else too. But we're looking to, to sort of improve on it for a specific use case of um, we have a lot of things that are in natural language, and so they have a certain, they, they have a lot of patterns associated with them, and we want to take advantage of some of those patterns um, to have the, the space be more efficient and, and in general just be able to pack more of them into a smaller, smaller area. Got it. So, um, so yeah, just, uh, just as a, so I, I have a, a general sort of idea where, where I, I'm going to sort of lead this through, but from the, from the get-go, uh, if you heard this, like, okay, we need to implement some kind of, um, you know, dictionary. And, and, you know, this might be, for example, um, looking up, this might be a spell check dictionary where you, you have common misspellings and they right. would all map to the, the proper spelling, or it may be like a, like a, a stemmer where you put in like the, the plural of a word and you get back. Exactly, yeah. um, it, it's singular or something like that. Exactly, so yeah. What, what kind of uh, approach would you take just sort of given that as a, as a, as a general kind of uh, problem? Sure. So basically, so we're dealing with um, text just to make sure I have the premise correctly. So we're dealing with a bunch of sort of text files or text input where we know that there's sort of uh, natural language patterns present. Is that kind of uh, what we're looking at? Or? Yeah, yeah, so just like, just words, you know, like we're not looking at paragraphs and we're not looking okay. at, um, at, at anything crazy like that. And, and, and we could even say for that, that maybe they're all in, even in the same language, they're all in English or they're all Got in it. French, they're all in something. Okay, let me add that to the description. So one language. Um, sure. So, let's see, not natural language pattern associated with them, and we want to take advantage of those patterns. So one. So let's see what kind of different kinds of patterns there might be. So there might be. Um, I know that uh, in translating, one thing you might do is you have tuples of words, or you have uh, n grams. So two grams, or three grams, or four grams, where you might say that a certain combination of words appears uh, most frequently. Um, and so if you can, if you know that you can basically do compression, right? So if you think about the way compression algorithms, algorithms work, then you might be able to describe uh, an n-gram or four words that appear together in one uh, in one phrase, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, so we're trying, so we're basically trying to create, to summarize a a, a lot of a set of words into a smaller data structure, smaller than a, a key value store, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so would the key like would it be like the key is a word and the value is like a translation or the value is uh, a larger set of words or? Uh, yeah, I mean for for our purposes, um, you could just think of the there being some kind of relationship between the key and the value, like plural to singular or misspelling to proper spelling or you know like what whatever it is. Okay, got it. So and we, for, for our purpose, if, you, if we really want to make it concrete, we might say that it's, um, let's say it's the the word to its dictionary form. So so like dog becomes dog and walked becomes walk and that kind of thing. Uh, okay. But uh, you know these in in general uh, the the kinds of techniques that that show up um, should. Uh, you know, just take advantage of some some kind of thing. So let's just sure. uh, work out this n-gram thing. It's an interesting sure. idea. So can you flesh out that idea a little bit more? I think I see where you're going with it, but uh, sure. can you just a little bit more? Yeah, sure. So basically, the the initial idea would be to take um, to parse the entire corpus we have and look for uh, any combination of words that appear, or like any time. So say you have um, the dog walks. I don't know that's to one random example, basically, you would take um, the, uh, you know, the three words appear together, or two or three, four words appear together, and you would map a specific, uh, one thing you could do is you could map a specific uh, abbreviation to that se sequence of three words. So that way you compress the amount of space you need uh, to store the entire corpus. Um, well, let's say, so for the application that I'm thinking of, we're not necessarily storing the corpus. We're trying to say, well, you know, let's say I, I have a document, the dog walked, and I want to transform that into the dog walk singular. So right. I'm really, I'm not really have that much use for the multiple words next to each other, um, because for my particular application, I'm just looking up individual. Gotcha. Yeah. So you're not you're not actually looking for patterns within the between the words or within the within the words. You're looking for meta patterns that um, can be sort of mappings that aren't inherent in the text, but can sort of are inherent in language itself and can be mapped right. transforms that are applicable to language as as a language in general and can be applied to each of the words to kind of create a meta added data. Added. Exactly. And in fact, uh, to to make this a little bit more concrete. Um, let me just take this over that you might say as input, you have a, a list of these words. So you'll have dog goes to dog, and dog also goes to dog, and walk goes to walk, and walked goes to walks, and walks goes to walk, kind of. So you'll, you'll have as, as input this that you'll want to um, be storing. Um, but you want to store it in, a, in, in an efficient fashion so that you can sort of look them up. And, and certainly a, a corpus can help you with this because you might say, well, um, you know, I'm not looking up these words in a vacuum. I'm looking up these words in a certain context. Um, and, the, you know, I might want to find a more efficient way to store the more commonly occurring words for purposes of uh, storage or something like that, or, or for lookups. Um, but so from that perspective, I was think where, where I think you were going with that would be things like um, storing n-grams of letters that you might say something like, you know, the the pair of letters D O might show up very often in this input uh, list, and so then you could potentially um, have a very short sort of code for what DO stands for. Um, and then maybe WA doesn't show up very often in, in this input list. Uh, and so yeah. you, could, um, you could have it be longer. That was sort of where I was thinking you were, you were going with that. But right, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, but, got it. Yeah. For, that's, for that's some reason, that, that actually makes me think of tries. Um, I'm not sure whether that's applicable to this problem, but. Uh, actually, Exactly where I was going with this problem, and I was going to ask if you'd heard of tries because that's that is what I, I love would the the, uh, the the canonical sort of yeah. uh, the best solution to this. Exactly. Because yeah. uh, in a try, obviously, you like you you uh, reduce the source because the first like you uh, for every word to start with s, you you use the same storage. So like you use the same s and you go down the tree. Um, yeah. 
I think that's used for T9 uh, word completion and so on. Um, yeah. Yeah. So try that would be the uh, way to go probably. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's just see if we can put one of these together really quick. It's not uh, you know it. it doesn't necessarily have to be the most efficient implementation, but um, in, in whatever language you like, maybe let's sure. just have a, a little function that, um, and, and you know the, the interface here, you can choose the language up on top and it'll even give you a little uh, way to test it out. Yep. Um, and yeah, so like the, the interface to the function would be it takes in a word and it uh, returns the, the mapping. Um, and for simplicity's sake, we can even just say, um, that you'll assume that the word is all the input word is always there. We we don't have to do all of the uh, the error checking. Yeah, error okay. yeah. So basically, you go from word to mapping. Uh, so like um, you. Uh, so how does that work? So like I mean, I guys, I'm sort of I'm visualizing like a try and like I'm trying to think like. So you input a word and then you kind of walk down the tree and kind of follow where. Uh, like I'm not sure what, what uh, in this case, what a mapping. Uh, um, so, it, so it takes in the word dogs and it returns the word dog. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So it returns that mapping. Okay. Um, so it, it returns the, the, the value of that key value pair. Got it. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I'm trying to think how that would work. So. Um, and, and yeah, if, you the, if you want to actually like do this with all the syntax highlighting, you can pick, you know, like uh, uh, JavaScript, or you can pick. Oh yeah, cool. One one, one of those. Um, it should have yeah, so it saves this kind of stuff. So you can do it in, in JavaScript, or you can do it in yep. Python, or whatever language is easiest for you. Got it. Let's try doing JavaScript a little bit. Right, let's see. We're done. Um, okay, so we need the basic uh, data structure we need is a, uh, one way to do this is to have a node. So you have a function that returns a node and then the, the entire try will be composed of nodes and relationships between them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess every, um, uh, a, a node will have a property. So we have a node which have, will have a property of, I wanted to put this in the comments over here. So we'll have a node, which will have a value, which will be a letter, or it could be something else, but for now, this is a letter. Um, it'll have a set of children, an array of children. Um, and I think, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the children do not have to have a reference to uh, the parent node. Um, so like if you start at the root of the of the try, then you go down and you uh, get a new letter as you go. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So that's a node. What uh, what what type is is the children? What type? Oh, the the, the children are nodes too. Okay. So basically, and, in a node. Go ahead. Um. So then, and where are you going to get the output from? So like. If you so it, it, as I see it here, you might have a, a node for D, and right. then it points to a child that's O, and it points to a child that's G. Right. But where does the uh, where does where does the output? Where, how do you know what to return at the end of all of this? Um. So basically, you you walk down the. So you mean where do you determine it basically? Oh yeah, where, where do you determine the output? So I, I'm seeing I'm seeing here the like how you how you walk through this uh, structure based on the input, but then how do you know what the appropriate output is? Got it. Um, let's see. So I think the, so you go DOG and then, or if you, what if you go DOGS, that should map to dog. Um, yep. How does it map to dog? Um, you could, one way to do it would be to have in the, in the G or in the S, have a pointer to a string that is where it maps to, basically. Um, yep. So you go D O G, and the G has a pointer to dog. Where you go D O G S, and the S had a point has a pointer to dog. Okay. And uh, how how does that change your 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 node class here? 
Um, so it could have a reference, a pointer or property in JavaScript terms to or pointer to um, let's see, it could have probably some property that the value would be a letter and the it could just have an output property actually. So like any if you're on, if you're doing DO, then the O node would not have a, or the output property would be null. But if you're on the G, then the output property would have the value dog, basically. Perfect. Yeah, sounds good. Property. Okay. Uh, let me see. So you would all go on the try, you would go DOG, the G would have a property for the output. Um, I think that should, and there should be some methods on the node. Um, so this should be uh, a contains method probably, or a map. So you should be able to ask a node, take this word and map it to the output. Yep. Or, I mean, or either way, I mean, you could have it be on the node itself, or um, you could sort of do it like it says up here where there's a function, say hello, and it takes in a node and the word or whatever it is. Either way, either way. Yeah, it could be, it could be based on the word on, on the actual data, or it could be based on node. Um, yeah, totally. Um, so we'll we probably don't need that. Okay. So um, okay. So here we go. So basically, first, let's see if a node needs more properties. Um, I think we basically need. You could ask a node whether it contains a certain word. Okay, so I think we're good. Um, yeah. Do you see any other properties we need, or? Um, I actually, or um, I'm curious if we even need the value, but uh, let's let's work through it. Let's work through it. Let's let's just let's just write this up. See what it'll sure. Take. Yeah. Okay. So first we need a factory for nodes. So we do something like this: uh, make node which takes a letter, I'll just make it explicit. And in like pseudo classical style, you would have this dot uh, value is letter. You would have this dot children is an array. And you would have this dot uh, output, for example, is Empty string. Actually, you would do null for now. By, by default, you wouldn't have a uh, output. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's, let's even just simplify things for a little bit and say, let's assume that you have the node and you're just going to try to to walk it with some input. Okay. So you have a node. So you're basically going to say uh, get. So you're going to take a node. So you're going to basically say node dot dot get output for doc basically something like that yep. like that yeah okay so that would be i would do it on the prototype so this is like a javascript specific but um you would do know the prototype dot get output dog String more explicit. Oh, this is wrong, by the way. Sorry. This should be a function that takes a string. And what it'll do is it'll uh, say if. So, first we have to do some pseudocode. Uh, first, we have to check whether. So, there's, we're going to loop through the string basically. We're going to, for each letter in the string, go check the current letter and see whether the value of the current node is equal to that letter. Uh, if, uh, let's see, actually the, let's think. So if the current node completes the string, then we're gonna check whether it has a mapping and output value, and we're gonna return that. Uh, if the string, if we don't, if we haven't had any, all the characters in the string yet, then we're going to check whether there is a child that has the value of the next character. 
and that way we're going to sort of go down down the track. Um, ah, okay. So with with this approach, it, it's just an array, and it has uh, a set of nodes. And so, what then is the uh, the lookup time? So, so this is this is going to be very efficient in space. But what is the lookup time now if you have to go and each for each letter you have to look up all of its children? Like um, in uh, asymptotic notation kind of thing. Sure. So basically I, I guess that so why I guess like in this function we're right now on a node that has a particular letter. So basically if you're looking up dogs, then you're on the node that has a uh, value D and you're asking mm -hmm. it um uh, can we, if we start start looking on this node for this string, uh, what is the eventual output we get? Um, so I would say that if you like have a, if you visualize like a massive try that has all these strings inside of it, um, this should be sort of on the order of log n, I think, because um, you're like going on the try. So you're like every for every next letter in the string, you basically choose uh, that. So what time. is what is n in in that? Like, is that the length of the string? Is that the fan out of the node? What what is what is n? Uh, n would be the uh, length of the string. I'm just trying to think. Um, so in a binary tree, you go left or right, so you can just do an easy comparison. Uh, if you have, say, there are ten children, and if you just put them in an array, then you would have to go through each of the items in the array to find the next uh to find the next um uh child or the next letter. So it is would have it actually probably have to be a an object over here. So this the children should be an object. So a hash map basically mm -hmm. where you can instantly look up the next letter in the string. Excellent. Um yeah so let's just flesh this out a little bit. That's that's definitely the right direction to go in. Um if we said, if we make a couple, um, if we make a couple assumptions here that n is the length of the string, and the um, the size, and m is the size of the alphabet. So, like in in English, this is this is basically twenty six. But in Chinese, it's like 3,000. Right. Um, using uh, the children as an array, we're looking at big O of what and children as a object, it's big O of what? So the... Um, if you look at the number of children a in an array, you would basically it could potentially be um, the size of the alphabet because the next letter could basically be uh, any of those letters. Um, mm -hmm. So you're looking at for, at every level of the tree of the tri, you're looking at a potential of m different letters, and you mm -hmm. have to go n levels deep. Um, mm -hmm. So that uh, let's see, that's n times uh, so m m at each level uh, n times. So I want to say might be wrong. M times n probably. Um, n times we're gonna have to make a choice between m letters. Okay. Yeah. Just just type it in there so we can so yeah. we can see. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. I think. Let's see. There we go. All right. And then, and then when it's an object. So an object the lookup of a specific uh, the next letter will be order n or, or i mean order one because that is a, you, you use a hash map and the you would have to do that n times so it would be order n i think yeah yeah because at n, n levels of the tree you're going to have to do a lookup in hash table which is order of n yeah okay so we're we're gonna choose the the object one for obvious reasons. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. good. Very good. Order one lookup. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. So let's, uh, yeah. Let's fill out this uh, this this prototype that you have here. Okay. Got it. So so the get get output function. 
let's see. So what do we need to do? So we check whether, so right now we're just asking some node to check whether what the, to return the mapping or the output of a given string. So first we need to check whether the current node, check current node value equals uh, string character, the current string character. So if you're using the children, if, if the children is a map from letters to nodes, uh -huh. then do you need to have a current value and do you need to make this, this check? I guess we would have found the this current node by actually just, uh, even if you're at the top level, but you're looking up the first letter in a hash map, so you know by definition that uh, we're on the current, like the current letter exists actually, that this node is for the current letter. Mm -hmm. So basically we would check uh, whether there is a, whether this node has a output value. If so, return that. Else, uh, take next. Uh, else, uh, if uh, there, if there, if there's a next character in the string, is the next character, then find that child and recurse else uh, return false or null sort of like that so basically if we're on the current node and there is a mapping so basically that, that is when we return the first map and we find so is that is that the correct thing so for example um the uh the word do uh, the the prefix of dog do uh, it, if this is an English language thing it, it will have a mapping and it will um, it will have the mapping of do like do is the the, the dictionary form of the word do uh, yeah. is that the right mapping for dog we might actually want to um, first use all the characters in the string and then see whether at the very last after the last one so when we're at the last after the last character, whether at that point there's a mapping or uh, there's an output. Um, instead mm -hmm. of uh, looking for the first output we can find. So like reverse it actually. Otherwise right. we're going to find a uh, substring. So yeah. check whether it's actually, uh, this is going to become a whole bunch of comments but anyway. Um, if string is has length zero basically, then Check output, and then as a subset of that, if output return that else return null. If string has more than zero length, uh, then we go to child. So if we're at the end of the string that was given, we just check whether there's an output. If there's an output, we return that. If there's no output, we return null. Else, if, there, if the string still has characters, then we just go to the next child. Yep. Basically. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, let's put that in uh, in JavaScript. Yep. So let's see. So if uh, string dot length uh, zero. So I do. I always do strict strict type checking as opposed to double equals. So I don't like the JavaScript has a whole bunch of truthiness, like that. Uh, right. Yeah, right. yeah, all the different types of equals. Yeah, I, I like just force to do type checking and so on. Um, so if string of length is zero, and I also like to do like nested if. So you could here, for example, do if string of length is zero and uh, there's an output, but I like to sort of uh, make the the way the code flows explicit in like indentation and all that, so it's easier to read. Um, so if this dot output is not null, 
again, you could also do like falsy, but I like to make it really explicit. Return output else return null. Uh, so that is doing like null else. Now we're doing uh, string zero. So we'll do, um, so now we need to know where we are in the string. So what we'll do is we'll, um, so we need a way, I'm th what I'm thinking about is we need to wait, we need a way to pass the entire string obviously, uh, but also the first letter. So we'll pass the first substring. So we need to find the child with string zero. Uh, let's see. So we'll do this dot get output actually let me backtrack. So var child equals um this dot children um string zero. And then we'll do child dot get output uh, string dot substring. I think it's one. The idea being that we uh, take so the substring will, the string will get smaller. So we'll take the first uh, character in the in the string and use that to find the child. And then we'll pass the child the like if the king if the string has three characters, then we'll pass it. Pass the child the fourth and fifth character, for example. So what actually, is, okay, no, that sounds good. Uh, what what actually gets returned in that case? Because it looks like you're just calling the function. So how does the get gotcha. output? Yeah, what what value gets returned? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So eventually, we need to actually return the output to uh, the backup. So Let's see, so we do child dot get output. Um, well, eventually we'll reach the last, the string will be empty and we'll reach, we'll reach the node that has the output and then we we'll return it up here, I guess. Um, but see. that just returns it to the previous uh, uh, recurse function. What about like when you, what about the, the function uh, like like the, the the code that called this in the first place. Like if you call this with just like the letter D or something, then it will end up down here. And the previous one will return, you know, whatever the mapping is for D, but then it will continue on down and sort of get get nothing down here. I mean like if there is no actual mapping. Uh no, like let's say there is a mapping. Um I, I'm just seeing that the the top level that that called this, I, I'm not convinced that it's going to ever see the the output because this re, these return statements over here mm -hmm. only happen for one for one case, and for the other cases there's no return statement. Uh, so I think you mean like if there is uh, no. Like if there is if there is there's no output at all, then there won't be any return, basically. Uh no. So let's say there is there is output. Um and and you put in dogs and, and dog is in the map and you and you want to get that back out. I I think that this implementation is not going to give you that output at the very end. Because you know, child here is going to get called with dogs. And it's going to call the substring with uh, OG. And then this will be called again with the substring of G. And then up here, it will finally get to um, returning the, the output here. I but see then what you mean. That just gets lost sort of here because nothing is actually, there's no, this return value kind of just gets thrown away. 
Gotcha. Yeah, I think that, exactly. I see. I totally see what you mean. Yeah, you you do return it like at the bottom leaf, so to speak, but then it doesn't go actually up the chain. So I right. think we might need to do this. Or we at least we need to make sure that like the the all the the top level and intermediate levels return the actual value that gets returned from the bottom. Exactly. Basically. Yep. So this needs to return as well. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Yep. Working mistake. Totally. Yep. <laughs> no problem. So one one other thing I'm noticing up in here, it's uh -huh. kind of a it, it's a very minor point, but do you see a way that this is a little bit more this this piece from 60 to 65 uh, is more convoluted than it needs to be? Um, I think we can probably simplify it a little bit. Uh, let's see. So if the string dot length is zero and do this output is null, then return output, else return null. Um, one, I mean, one thing I can think of, we can combine the two if statements. Um, I'm so, specifically thinking from 60 to 65, that I think there's more, there's more lines of code there than okay. Um. We could just return output, of course. Right. Um, yeah. So output is either going to be a value we want or null. And either way, we want to return exactly that. So we basically could say, and I'm just going to edit this here, we basically could turn this into uh, that. Exactly. Basically. Yep. And there you go. You've got to try. Um, yep. Very good. So I like that, that we're doing a try. That's a, it's a data structure. I've, I've, I've never, uh, I hadn't implemented that often, but it's fun. It's a fun data structure. Yeah, and and as you can see, the uh, the lookup function is very simple. It's just yeah. what five six lines of code we have here. Yep. Um, so here's an interesting question for you. If you sure. take this um, take this uh, function and copy and paste it, and now turn it into put output. So let's say you want to add something to this try. Uh -huh. You yep. haven't. And instead of pulling out the value, put the value in. And what you'll notice, if you think about it for a sec, is that the two implementations are very, very similar with only one very small change. Got it. Let's try that. So I'm going to copy this entire thing. Uh, I think that might be the best way. So I'm going to copy this and put it down here. Oops. Indentation. Put it down here and call this add node. Something, something like that. Or add add value. Add value. Add, add value. Yeah. Add value. I'm going to add a string. Um, so let's see. What we're do, what do well, we do? So so when we add it, we're adding a mapping. So remember that that what's happening is we're we're giving it as input basically this list of like dogs to dog and walked to walk and so forth. So we're actually going to be adding a mapping to it. So we're we're going to be adding a key and a value. Got it. Okay. So add like both, yeah, both the so key and value. So let me just make that explicit here. Key value. So okay. So we're gonna basically traverse down the try um, up to the. We're gonna take key, uh, go through it, and at the end of key, uh, can we assume that the Maybe if we start, let's start by assuming that the key already exists, that all the entire like chain is present, and then at the end of key, uh, the la last node uh, add a mapping to value. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Okay. Yeah. So again, if string has length zero, then add value as output. Um, we don't need this step, and that step we do need. So basically, we're going to do if string dot length equals zero, then this dot output equals value. Mm -hmm. Else uh, var child equals this children uh, key zero. Uh, not sure we need to return. So this would be uh, key the substring one. Uh, and we could, I mean, depending on what, how we want the API to look like, we could return true or uh, true for success. But 
No, we, let's just let's just not have it return anything. It, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't need anything. So, yeah, it only goes down the tree and just then performs the action. All right. So just so you're definitely along the right the right track here. Um, so we had renamed stir to key. So you want, oh, yep. you want to change that to line seventy one. Key to link. Yep. Um, this still says get output. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. And add value takes two parameters. Yep, you're totally right. Uh, let's see. So this would be the key, and the value would be value as we have it. Uh, let's see. So key substring one, value, pass it along. Okay. okay. Just trying so, to see whether I've misnamed yeah. anything, but. No, that was good. Um, so the interesting thing here is that it, it does make a rather stark assumption that the uh, the key is already in place. And so yep. if the key is already there, then this will this will work. But let's add just a tiny little bit of code so that if the key is not in there, that it will go ahead and uh, add it. And, and, and add it. Cool. Yeah, so sure. Uh, so we're going to do that over here. So here what we're gonna do is if if child or if uh next char present as child uh then do basically this uh then proceed else uh create new uh node with value and add to children object, which looks like this. So we're going to do um, if uh, this dot children has own property um, key zero. I think I would probably add like var next char equals key zero just for semantics so this would become uh, next char uh, then we do var child equals that one so we have a child else we'll do uh, this dot uh children uh next char equals oh, new node equals uh new node uh with next char as a value this is a good property so we it'll be children equals Empty object and output equals null. Uh, let's see. Should be good. Um, mm -hmm. This is children equals new node. Uh, let's see. And then I'm trying to figure out what, what to go between here. So. So you just need to uh, set child again. Uh yeah, so basically var child equals that. So uh, let's see, Ch children. Yeah, exactly. So var child All right. This is a double. This is like a double code. So basically, all I need to do is if. Uh, so this is like you know repeated repeated code. So basically, all I need to do is say if the children do not yet have that next letter as a property, then add it. When create a new node and add it. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? So all, all I need to do is if that is not the case, then we do this. Else, we don't even need that. There we go. So what we right. what happens is we define the next character. We say if among the children of this node, there is no such characters yet, and we make a new node over here 
and add it to the children. And then once we have that child, we, and here we can say new char or next char. We get that child and we reverse next char. Okay, I think that should we go through uh, again. I think the, sure. child was, was, the child was right the first time. It was? I want to see it next. Oh, crap. Yeah, sorry. There we go. All right. And now you've right. uh, now you've created a try. Yep. All right. Uh, no, that's looking really good. So, um, did you have any any uh, last questions for me? I think uh, I think that that's that's pretty good. Cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for your time, by the way. Um, yeah. I mean, so for me, like, I'm sort of getting back into the game. So this is like one of my first. Uh, uh, this afternoon, I did like a uh, a uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, whiteboard uh, interview. So this is like oh, where okay. you know. Uh, shared coding. Um, so it's been really interesting. I love like the fact that I'm getting back to try. That's so really good. Um, so whatever uh, feedback or whatever like uh, uh, yeah, whatever feedback you have is totally welcome. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll write it up in the uh, in in the little report. Oh, perfect. Um, how does that work? Like, is there like a account or like is it is it automatically sent or something like that or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of it, like I, I write up a little thing, and uh, and then you can see the the feedback and all that kind of stuff. So perfect. Cool. Thanks so much. Yeah. Well, yeah, take care. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Bye. Yeah.